oh, earlier who believes this is a wind-up toy false flag of some type. Normally, I would do that. But with the guests we've got, there's no need to do that because he's such an expert. Larry Nichols was the Clinton State House whistleblower and government insider. He served as political confidant and advisor, pretty much the right-hand man, to Governor Bill Clinton for more than 10 years and helped Bill Clinton get elected and re-elected as governor of Arkansas. The film, The Clinton Chronicles, and others were basically made about Nichols. Mr. Nichols uh, is unrestrained by political correctness and was specifically mentioned by Bill Clinton in his memoir. And he's been there with Clinton exposing his murders, the drug dealing, uh, the, the, the attacking people, the raping the women. He is the Clinton expert. We're going to be having him on a lot. He's probably been on the show 20 times over the years, hadn't been on in a few years. And uh, with the Clintons, like an old nightmare coming back, uh, Larry Nichols is here. He wrote a book about it, predicting what Hillary would do, and it's all happening. I remember reading the book years ago. In fact, I was trying to find a copy of it around here. It's out of print. Uh, but Larry Nichols has gone through living hell because when the Clintons went from kind of being boss hoggish corruption to being outright murderers and stuff, that's when Nichols went up against them. Because Nichols wasn't going to be part of ripping off old people and, you know, killing people. And, you know, you saw what happened to Vince Foster. But clearly they're trying to hype a race war. They pretty much admit that. Or, or, or a giant chaos crisis fiasco. So then they can federalize the police and come in and take over. I mean, it's unprecedented to have U.S. presidents and the attorney general rubbing salt in the wounds, acting like the police basically are the Klan in the 60s bombing churches. I mean, even in black-run cities where half the cops are black and the whole city council is black, you know, you think the cops are killing black people because they're racist. No, they're killing them because they've been given murder training, but, you know, vicious jujitsu training, you name it, and beating people's brains out. I mean, I've been to jail for protesting and had them in the Travis County Jail for no reason. Didn't smart off nothing. Run my head in the wall. Give me a little bruise. Wasn't that hard. And then the, and then the jail guard's like, you want to do something? Go ahead. I have the New York police, when they arrest me for protesting, take my handcuffs off in the jail bay, five cops, and go, you want to do something? Go ahead and make a swing and then sit there and start talking trash to me. And I was like, are you ki kidding? I said, are you really about to attack me and say I attacked you? I said, Psh, whatever. Then they had some guy come up and taunt me in the jail cell. And I'm not even going to go into that. The point is, it wasn't because I was, the, most of them were white in that precinct and I was white. You, you got some mentally ill jerks who want power, who get in there. And instead of running them out of the departments, they're trying to put them in departments in many cities. But is that a racial issue? Maybe there's a stereotype that black people commit more crimes because of the type of crime and what's happened to those cultures. In some areas, that's true. But, but And there's probably some racism too. But in the final equation, Having a war with the police is about bringing in chaos. So joining us is Larry Nichols, Jakari Jackson's riding shotgun. Larry, when we called him, said, you don't want to move me another day? Yeah, I, I want to get Larry back on next week for a full hour just on the Clintons. And we'll spend some time on him today. You can have this gone for five hours. Now let's book him today for whenever you can do it next week. We really appreciate Larry Nichols uh, coming on. But you can see order out of chaos. You can see that they plan to not relinquish power. You can see they've been running Obama the whole time. You can see that her chief of staff was at Bilderberg this year and nobody else showing us where they're going. So Larry Nichols, uh, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. Hey, Alex, how are you, my friend? It's an honor. Well, it's an honor to talk to you, and I want to get you on Skype as soon as we can. I know you've got yeah. Skype capabilities most days. Uh, Larry, but it's good to see your picture up here on TV with us and radio. Where do you want to start? I mean, you really are. Oh. You were there where they were making the biscuits. You were there where they were making the sausage. I mean, you know how Bill Clinton was made and Hillary. What is going on? I mean, everybody has a bad feeling in their gut. We know bad stuff's coming. What do you see happening? Well, it's exactly what you and I had talked about years ago. Thankfully, thanks to you and other programs, we stopped it. You know, Bill was using, if you'll recall, Alex, Jesse Jackson. 
Remember, Jesse Jackson was the sp- supposed to start riots in five major cities. And then Bill Clinton would, of course, have to declare martial law. And once they get the provisional government rule in, then they, they get to be king forever. We stopped it by making it public. Well, now we've got problems. They're festering it up. And no, you are so right. It's not about race, Alex. I mean, yeah, there's the underpinning of race. The folks, all of this that's going on is about power. Power. And the Clintons absorb power like we take in sunshine. Now, the thing that's going on today, you have to be so careful, so very careful, because at any time, you know they're going to start tip for tap. Well, you kill some black guys, somebody kills some white guys, some white guys kill some more black guys. And then you end up in this total chaos, and when that happens, all bets are off. And whoever is sitting, folks, whoever is in power when this thing collapses they become king or queen blackgenocide.org reverend childress knows his eugenics history he knows his globalist history probably better than i do and blackgenocide.org is just a treasure trove of fighting evil i mean my heart i don't want to be one of these fake liberals like clinton going up oh, i love black people i'm like a black person you know what i'm a person i got red blood and it makes me sick watching black people, particularly in the clutches of the nanny state that wants to kill them. And to know that these top liberals are current Grand Dragons, like Senator Byrd and others, who's dead now. He never left the Klan, folks. And does that mean the Republicans are good? No, they're horrible. Look at them with the TPP. And they want us at each other's throats. This is cynical. It's sick. And whether they wound this guy up or whether it was staged or not, they're not letting a good crisis go to waste. They're going to rub salt in the wound. And the scripting of, oh, and they they were there, and he just cold-bloodedly killed them. And it was horrible. They wouldn't normally do that because they don't want to incite stuff. They are inciting. I don't know if the police chief is that stupid or was fed this by the Justice Department. But if I, and then Reverend Childress points out Juneteenth's coming up. And then the big NAACP meeting and all this with all these movies and TV shows out about race and the media, when you see prepping and see, I was saying I didn't see the media with their talking points at first, but actually the talking points came before. And then they didn't want to be seen with their talking points because it's gotten too obvious. Like when Bloomberg got caught with the emails the night before saying, get Twitter ready for a big shooting the night before Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Uh, I mean, I'm ranting here. Reverend Childress, we just got three minutes left in this short segment. I'm going to come back with Jakari Jackson and Larry Nichols. But other points you'd like to impart, and I'd like to invite you back on tomorrow, please, sir, uh, as we know more about this. Well, it appears that uh, Time Magazine, as you remember when the last time I was on your program, it was there in South Carolina where they said black, uh, black lives matter. Uh, r right now, South Carolina has become ground zero. Whatever happens from here certainly will determine the climate in America for a while. And I don't know what, what I'm praying that the people of South Carolina show unconditional love and also uh, being that we're all family and that they can really quell this. I'm telling you, if they hype things up, uh, Baltimore will seem like Disneyland from this. So it's, it's unquestionable that we, we have to unquestionably pray for the peace of uh, Charleston, this pastor, the, this pa now this church is basically without leadership. When you kill the people on Wednesday night, that's your core group. That, those are the people that really get the, the church moving. They've all been taken out. And so I, I hope the church rallies, but they rally in They love. have martyred this church. You know, it could be a white supremacist plot, too, and not a governmental one or Southern Poverty Law Center type op because like there that. are some white supremacists who do want to start a race war like Helter Skelter and um, what we saw with Charlie Manson. But then he was tied into the government as well. Man, I tell you, I just I can feel it in my gut, like you said, Reverend, in your, in your spirit, something big's about to happen. Right. I just don't know who it is. Uh, but it's obviously that it is. The young man was, was, was prepped for this, not this week, weeks ago. This, 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 is, this is going down now. 
course, it's all, you know, they have to see how the people respond. It's an anticipation on how the people respond. This is where you call on God and he can take something evil and turn it around to make something wonderful happen. And if he doesn't, so that's the answer. Pray for peace. Pray for discernment. Pray the scales yes. be lifted off people's eyes. And we use this to come together, not uh, apart. Yes, that's the design. Design is to separate and cause the war and cause uh, more government intrusion, and no question, and control to strip us of more of our freedoms. That's the plan. All right. But, God bless uh, you, sir. We're going to figure out who's doing it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me. You can join us tomorrow? Yes, sir. Tomorrow's Friday. Right. Yes. Sir. God yes. bless you. I mean, until they don't want to be king or queen anymore. And you're talking about some majorly powerful people, Alex, and they want it bad. Now, talking wow. about the Clintons, uh, the book that you and I talked about years ago <clears throat> that I, I told your producer what I wish you would do, Alex, is take the book, The Genie's Out of the Bottle. Take the front part out because that's dated to 98 and 99. Put in something current there, Alex, and then get it out to people. Sell it to people because in the book, The Genie's Out of the Bottle, it will tell you exactly what Hillary's doing. Exactly. Every step of the way. And as you know, how do I know? Because I helped write the book. Dick Morris, me, Paul Begala the people that were known as the kitchen cabinet for the Clintons. We developed this system to get a sick, perverted, pathological liar in the deep south in the mid-70s, elected governor, and to keep him there. And with a hippie wife that was a full-blood, card-carrying ward around her neck, member of the United States Communist Party, Hillary, it took some doing. But it works, and it works today. And I hate to say it, Alex, but I, I, the reason I'm here with you, you and I were together when you were young and I was middle-aged. Now I'm old, and I guess you're still young. But it's back again. It's back again. It, it, it's coming. It's coming like Well, I'm not that years. young, brother. I'm, I'm probably no. about the age you were when we first started talking. 20 years That's ago, and we should probably briefly start at the beginning, because why you worked with them at first, but then when it got really corrupt, you said, I'm not going to be part of this, lost everything, you name it. A lot of people mm -hmm. got killed who were around you. They killed police, mm -hmm. state police. I mean, they killed a lot of folks trying to shut you up, but they didn't want to kill you to turn you into a martyr. Well, and because I had to help develop the system, I knew where the bodies were, they knew that. And then I knew a little bit about how the system worked. And so, Alex, believe it or not, you kept me alive 20 years ago. Because by staying public, they couldn't KO me. Because if they did, everybody would say, oh, okay, they did it. And it would be, it would be them. So, and that's what Jim yeah, Garrison said. They killed hundreds of people around the Kennedy assassination. They said, why are you still alive? And he said, because I stay in the sunshine. That's right. You stay out and open. I remember telling, well, anyway, let me back up just a moment. You're right. You know, I forget there are 20 somethings, 30 somethings, 40 somethings, and even some 50 somethings. Alex, I don't even remember what the Clinton administration was about and who the players are, who they were, and who they're going to be again. I was with Bill Clinton. I was working for Mr. Jack and Witt Stevens, folks. And in Arkansas, deep south, in that period of time, they owned everything. They were, as I learned later on in life, I learned they were the titular head of the Dixie Mafia. And I was in the Mafia and didn't even know it. And was on one of the FBI said I was only one of, one of very few people, if any, that ever walked out of the mob when they were in it. But I was their guy. I was their fair-haired boy. Well, Mr. Witt found this guy named Bill Clinton, and he said, I'm going to make that kid governor. Go do it. I did. I went. I found out he was a pathological liar, womanizer. I mean, this guy's sick. His wife is sicker. Hillary Rodham at that time. She wouldn't even be called Clinton. And it's now come out that she's probably had more women than, than Bill. Absolutely. You remember when I said that years ago, everybody thought, my God, how can you do that? I can do it easy. 
Because I've watched her. I mean, she's ACDC. I mean, she'll do whatever she's got to do to get the power, whatever, and whomever. So I took on the case of the Clintons, worked with him, working for the Stevens, uh, built a power system around this kid, and he wanted to be president of the United States. We all laughed in those days because of Gary Hart and others that were caught fooling around with women, and it would be impossible for Bill Clinton to pull it off. But we went ahead and developed what was called the 86 Plan. And Stay there. Larry plan. Nichols joins us. Yes, uh, the real deal, folks, in the center of the Clinton web. He knows the Hillary plan. You heard him. Race riots in America to bring in civil emergency. That's the plan, and I've never seen them geared up like this. Looks like they're getting ready to make their move. Hillary's getting money from third world dictators and countries at the State Department to allow weapons to be sold to them. Totally illegal on its face. Doesn't get in trouble. Bill Clinton, quote, brushes it off. Settles cases for raping women uh, in settlements. Brushes it off. Feminists say it's great. This is a short segment, long segment coming up with Larry Nichols. Jakari Jackson's here riding shotgun with us today. Pop it anytime you want, Jakari. Uh, with any questions or comments for Larry Nichols. We're going to have Larry back on next week if he can do it for a full hour uh, just so we can get into the whole history of it with Hillary coming up. We already had him scheduled from last week. Uh, but in this short segment, you were getting into the beginning of it and putting Bill Clinton in there and he wanted to be president. And then we'll finish up with that in this segment. Next segment, what Hillary will do once she gets in power. Because it's clear, it's not just trying to start a race war. They're trying to start a war with Russia. They've overthrown Ukraine. They've turned ISIS loose. Uh, they're so bold. They're so bold. It, it's like they're going for broke around the world, not just domestically, Larry Nichols. Well, Alex, just imagine this. The system we built in a third-rate state in Arkansas in the Deep South, we learned that if we got control of the media in Arkansas, we learned if we got control of the prosecutor, the attorney general, every prosecutor in every county, guess what? We could do anything we wanted to do. And you know what? If you got caught, so what? Nobody's going to prosecute you. That has now moved to Washington. And you're exactly right. I get so fed up with people saying, oh, this, that, and the other. Hey, this is about global power. I mean, look what they're doing. They're destroying the Middle East. I know we all say it's Obama, and it is. But remember... These people have certain goals they want, and they're going to get them. And the reason Alex, I think, can testify to it, because I told him years ago, 20-something years ago, of the goals that they were going to accomplish, and here they are. It's not an accident. It's not. Break down and, some of their goals, what they want, who they work for, where they're going. Well, right now, what they want is to get absolute control of government. Because once you control government, you make the rules. <clears throat> the next thing they want to do, they want to move us <clears throat> into full war communism. I get kind of tickled. It's not funny, but here you got old Bernie Sanders, a socialist running against Hillary. Nobody will tell the truth. You got a socialist against a communist. They want us to become a communist society. Then. They want to take the Middle East. Why? Because if you can destabilize the Middle East, Alex, now the Clintons knew this 20 years ago. If you can destabilize the Middle East, you know what you do? You got the keys to the world. You got the keys. And so all of this is moving that away. And Hillary, let, may I make a prediction? Number one, Jeb Bush going to be the Republican nomination for president for the Republicans. And Hillary going to be the next president unless... Alex, you, you, buddy, get on a boat of lightning and somehow can get the Tea Party to rise up together and stop it. Well, that's why they're targeting the Tea Party, the Liberty Movement, with false charges, setups. Danessa Shusha just got out of prison <coughs> after nine that's months. Right. I mean, I mean, it really is scary, the tactics they're using. It is. And the problem is, Alex, they've got the media, they've got the money, they got all these people, Carl Rowe, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, they've got all these people playing all these little games, acting all these good guy, bad guy things. 
And we don't have a gathering place. We don't have a central place to galvanize us and, and to be able to point out what's coming before it comes. What we all end up doing now, which is what I guess I'm here for, and the reason the Clintons hate me, and the reason I'm the one that the guy mentioned in his dang memoirs of all things, is because I know what's coming. I, I know because I wrote the plan. And so it's coming. And all they got to do is keep us busted up, separated, and they win. Especially with guys like the Chamber of Commerce. You know, those people put 50, Alex, they put $50 million up, not to fight Democrats, to fight Tea Party candidates at every level in the RNC. Yeah, you're a better analyst than, you know, the so-called analysts they've got on Fox News. You've been there, you've seen it, and that's the thing. We've got the Republican and Democratic leadership with the wagon circled. Right. Uh, taking over the country and yep. literally shutting it down, trying to put us under the TPP. And now we've got Hillary racing in there to finish the job. Uh, yeah, it know, is just yeah. sick beyond belief. Can I, yeah, can I tell you all, Hillary, and if you get the book, you need to the bottle. Stay there, stay there. there. We're going to talk about right. that. Uh, we're coming back in a long segment. Larry Nichols, the consummate insider. Uh, that makes me sick, physically sick. We're in trouble. Uh, when Larry Nichols says this show is one of the only larger shows that will cover these issues, I've been physically attacked. That's one thing I don't like about the Clintons. I got physically attacked and told to shut up about Waco by five guys. Four of them attacked me, and they were paid. When the cops came, they tried to arrest me until they saw the surveillance footage, and they were told not to investigate it. Uh, I had all sorts of dirty tricks done. I had the military in plain clothes threaten me in parking lots. Uh, I had all sorts of other dirty tricks where feds would come to my book signings or, and say, hey, let's you know, bomb the police station or whatever, and I'd go outside, I'd follow them, they'd be you know, in an unmarked federal police car. And that's one thing under the Bushes, I kind of got left alone, even though they were involved in incredible corruption and they're tied in with the Clintons. Under the Clintons, they come after you. And I see more and more of a Clinton hand in Obama with all this persecution of conservatives, Christians, libertarians, gun owners, and it really is mafia. I mean, that's what they are. And it's Dixie Mafia meets the CIA. And what's scary is they know they're old. They've gotten to this point. This is their chance. They know where the bodies are buried. They're blackmailing people. This is their chance to move on every front. And during the break, I was telling Jakari, I was like, I can't believe as a 41-year-old person with three children that it's my responsibility to do this. But I can't just sit here while they hand us over to foreign corporations, take our guns, forcibly inoculate us, double everybody's health care prices, screw everyone, put troops on don't treat death list, stage shootings, you know, fast and furious. I, I mean, I'm not trying to just whine here. It's, I use the term epic, over the top, legendary, awesomely evil. Uh, Reverend Childress was, you know, calling it just, just evil genius. I mean, it, it, it's the thing is, they're moving on every front. They're trying to start war with Russians. They have U.S. troops battling Russians right now. That's that's hardly ever happened. Uh, Larry Nichols, I'm ranting here, and Jakari Jackson's here with us. But I don't think I can un overstate how perilous a uh, situation we're in. Talk about what their, what their goals were back then, where they're going now, what Hillary's going to try to do, and how racial division seems to be so central. And then, and then Jakari, jump at any time because he's going to join us again next week just on the Clintons themselves. But, but, but bringing this forward to where we are now to understand. Because am I wrong in saying they seem to be racing to finish things? Is that out of confidence or out of desperation? Not out of confidence. They've got everything the way it was set up to be. The thing that I guess you've left out of what we've talked about is I have to live every day, Alex, with the fact that I helped write and in most cases wrote most of uh, the plan that is now destroying our country. That's a pretty awesome thing to wear on you. And that's why I've been so dedicated so all these years, no matter the beatings, getting shot at, reporters being with me, getting shot at, yeah, you know what? You just keep going. This is going to be tough, Alex. These people play for keeps. If y'all hadn't figured it out by now, 
All Hillary's got to do to win this campaign is simple. Don't let anybody get in the race against her on the Democratic side. Boom, it's over. And you'll notice that Hillary is mean enough that when they go to Elizabeth Warren, I assume, or somebody else that might pose a serious challenge, they'll make an offer that they can't refuse. The mistake she made against Obama. She should have run Obama out of the race before he ever got in it and said, son, you're too young. You'll get your chance later. But you get in my way, I will destroy you and you'll never see the light of day. That's what should have been done. But Hillary has got one flaw that Bill Clinton didn't have. She is obesely arrogant, hates me. And, and she just hates doing anything except the way she wanted it. But she's not making that mistake this time. All Hillary's got to do, y'all watch, just keep anybody credible from getting in on the Democratic side against her. And she wins the race. All she's got to do is the other thing that we learned and we used every day, Alex. How do you win an election? Number one, you control your opposition. Hillary and her power players are controlling the RNC, and they're making sure somebody like Jeb Bush on earth is going to be the nominee, somebody that cannot beat them, somebody that cannot possibly activate the conservatives in this country and get them so excited they'll come out and vote. The fix is the in. Number. The fix is in. Yep. Now, not to mention, good heavens, folks, you have never even seen anybody that's rigged as many vote machines as I have. You've never seen anybody on your earth that has ever had as many dead people make contributions and vote as I have. This is coming for you. This is coming for this country. This is coming, Alex, for your children. That's why, by God, you got to fight. My grandbabies, that's why I got to do what I don't want to do. I'm 65 years old. I want to sit out in a pasture somewhere and say, hey, I've been to Nicaragua, every hellhole in the world. I'm done. I'm finished. But you're not going. Folks, I know maybe y'all think this is hyper sensationalism, but you better listen to me. You're not going to have a country when this thing is done and this thing is going to be in the next election. There won't be another election, Alex, although it'll happen. You know, hey, they got elections in Cuba, don't they? But they're not free. They're not fair. Either vote for who they say, I will kill you. That's and right. So many people who've lived in a quasi-free country, because nothing's perfect, cannot believe that they would actually go under tyranny. But the decision's right. been clearly made. Everything's racing towards that. And they're openly announcing, yeah, we're going to start shutting reporters down. Yeah, we're going to arrest you for your speech. Yeah. Can you imagine 20 years ago telling a reporter that's been dedicated or put in the pool reporters that they can't attend a, a, an event by a presidential nominee? Are you kidding me? No. 20 years ago, Alex, could you believe somebody could run for president of the United States? And, oh, gee, for three or four months, I'm not going to even talk, answer any questions from anyone. Are you kidding me? And they play the card that she's a woman. It, it, it's everything boiled down to identity politics. And so if you don't like her, you hate women. I mean, it That's is right. just, it is mind-blowing. Jakari Jackson, uh, any because I want Larry to continue with his breakdown of this and his warning. Well, I just agree with what Larry was saying, talking about uh, sen the uh, censorship of the reporters. You recall myself and Joe Biggs went down to the border to talk to Nancy Pelosi, even though we had already talked to her media contact. We get down there, they don't let us into the event. You know, oh, so know. They, they do things like this all the time. Same thing when I went to right. go see Obama. He came here to the LBJ Center, and I actually had my press pass and went through all the credentials and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, so I'm ready to go. And it's like, no, you can go stand in that room over there. I was like, I don't yeah, want to no, stand no, no. in the room what Obama's I, not in. You know, that's how they do. Yeah, what I was saying was 20 years ago, could you have believed this could happen? Oh, today, trust me, it's happening. It's happening. But. Yeah, one other problem. One of the thing, key elements in our system was what we called the broken coalition. Now, there weren't enough blacks in Arkansas in that day to win an election. Today, nationally, what is 12%? In that day, being a queer was bad. There weren't that many people that came out and said they were openly gay. Then you had the women's liberals, then you had the hippies, then you had the yippies. All of these segments, we figured out, you know what? 
yeah, there's good old hardcore conservative Christian moral people in Arkansas, and there's more of them than any one of these groups. But what if we got all those little groups together? Then we become a power source that can't be touched. And we did. And it worked. And now they have what's called the Broken Coalition, which now you have to add in what? The illegal Mexicans. So everything in that plan is working exactly like clockwork. And the problem is the American people, Alex, all of you, the American people that still believe that you would you still believe that America is or was or whatever. Anybody still believes in America? Guys, you're going to have to suit up. You're going to have to suit up. You can say, hey, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to do whatever. Yeah, you are. You're either going to lose it by giving up or you're going to stand. And you're going to stand tall and you're going to tell the truth. Well, you that's know? the thing is, is this isn't going to be boss hog tyranny like you were involved in, just good old boy stuff. They want to break the system forever, break then, our will, and domesticate us. This is a hardcore tyranny. And, it is. I mean, they just hate prosperity. They say we didn't build our businesses. Uh, they tell people in the third world they can't have air conditioning or cars while they're on jumbo jets. I mean, these are some yep. nasty people. Jakari Jackson, you've been working here a couple years doing a great job. Uh, we're about to send you and whoever else you think you want to go with you um, up to South Carolina to cover all this tragic event. Um, you talk about support. I didn't even plug anything last hour. We're going to plug right now and also plug Mr. Nichols, who's lost everything doing this. Uh, but that's why we need to get more reporters hired, too, so we have enough to always cover all these things as things heat up. Um, but, Jakari, what is it like just, just to see it all for yourself? I mean, here it is. Um. WTOC television, police say he was on Suboxone, a Schedule Three narcotic, which is basically a antipsychotic slash amnesic mind control drug. Yep. Um, I mean, of course we knew that was coming. It's up on InfoWars.com. Um, it's just so sad because we really are being conquered at a fundamental spiritual or, or cellular level. Uh, I feel whipped, I feel empty, I feel enslaved. And, and what's sad is, I know this is just the, the the feeling of what's coming. You know, the echo from the future. Because we're heading towards this wall, I'm yelling, I can hear, the. you know, it's bouncing back like sonar. I can see what's there. I don't know what allegory, it makes me sick. And I've never felt sick talking about the New World Order, but to see it really coming into view, to see them really grabbing people's bank accounts now in Europe, getting ready for that collapse, to really see all this, Shikari, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm a whipped person. It's the feeling of knowing that they want the power. They want to whip us. They want to dominate us and break prosperity and break goodness because they're evil. Mm -hmm. I think it's that coming up against, brushing up against, evil and it won't leave it won't back off it won't shut up it's dumbing everybody down it, it, it's it's like being stuck in a room with somebody you hate i think that's the best allegory and we're gonna get mr nichols take on it but what's your take on that well you know when you see all this stuff coming down just like larry was talking about 20 years ago you know i was a, a small child but i'm trying to get in the mindset of somebody 20 years ago do they really well of course you knew alex but you know what's the mindset of people back then could they imagine something like this you know if you said you know no. 2015 We'll have all these things going on, the things with Russia, the things here domestically. And Larry, of course, says no. And it, it's very interesting to me the, how the whole thing is coming about and how many people are still blind to it. You know, Well, exactly. They're just maneuvering right now. They're just... Man 20 years ago, they were getting everything set up. You know, they got the derivatives in. They got the banking laws changed. It was all the Clintons and the globalists around them. And now he went to Bilderberg. And now Hillary's got her people at Bilderberg, nobody else. And now they're getting ready to finish us off. Uh, is that an accurate Jigari, statement, Larry? Jigari, let me say something, Jagari. Sure. 20 years ago, the average credit card debt to a household when Bill Clinton took office was around 5000 <clears throat> When he left office, the average family owed 60 something thousand dollars in credit cards. And it was built based off of a false account.
economy system. That's what they've been building, Alex. That's what you're talking about. Everything feels like it's about to blow. We've lived off a false economy with these people being led through the nose in Jakarta. I'll tell you what it felt like 20 years ago. Alex remembers this guy, Larry Nichols, comes on this program telling what's coming, which seems so unimaginable. It sounded it like was. a poor Class B horror flick. But it was true. It was true. And now, Alex, what you're feeling is you're actually seeing that which you've known about when in your heart of hearts, because of being an American, you didn't think it could actually happen for sure. You thought, but you couldn't see it for sure. Now you're seeing it for sure, and it's like a freight train, guys, that we're standing out here on the tracks, and we're looking at each other and saying, uh, Alex... Corey, uh, me, you know, which one of us will stand up in this track and stop that train? Because that's what it is. And guys, these play, people play rough. Alex is not kidding you. These people play rough, but nobody believes it. Well, ask, you know, ask Vince Foster. He has, gosh, that, anyway, 50 some odd people that I knew that I had to testify that ended up dead. No, Bill and Hillary didn't kill them. But the system that wants them in power, the mob, they act on their own. They don't need Bill and Hillary. You know, it's just like this thing with these emails. Guys, do y'all really believe that an Obama heir to Clinton Justice Department is going to investigate Hillary? You've heard that Gowdy guy say, you know, hey, I can't, from this committee, I can't go issue a subpoena. No, we can't. It's all being played. Vayner, McConnell, they're playing this like a strat of errors. And you know that because if you are a Tea Party, you got to ask yourself this. If you're a member of the Tea Party, you would be considered the base of the Republican Party, wouldn't you? You're exactly the kind of person that the party was built, that the, following up the moral majority. Yes. And yet the Republicans turn on them. Turn on them and commit fifty million dollars to defeat them, not just at the presidential level, congressional level, but at the dog catcher level. They despise the Tea Party because they know the one thing that I know. The Tea Party, if it will, if it can be led, the Tea Party can take over the RNC and if we took over the RNC, we could take back our country with a choice. But pretty soon, it's not going to be a choice. Once those Mexicans are made to be able to vote, folks, you will have seen the last national election in this country's history. Once that's done. And that's the plan. I, uh, th there's also a blindness to these corporate mafias and that they all want their interest, but then they don't yep. really think about, at least on the surface, how that connects down the road. I mean, all that money in the world and power is going to be worthless if we have nuclear war with the Russians. I mean, well, I mean, it's hardcore. I mean, yeah, you know. And, and how should you think of all these CEOs? Why do you think these CEOs are raping these country companies with these huge ungodly salaries and bonuses? They know that can't exist. They're getting so much money. The powerful CEOs in this country know, Alex, that this thing's going down and they're raising as much money for themselves as they can so they and their families will be safe. I got news for them. You ain't gonna not, you're not gonna find an island in this world that you're gonna be able to buy and be safe. Not wow, let's watch. come back and hear from Larry Nichols. Because <laughs> I was on air for most of the Clinton administration right from the start, a few years into it, and I witnessed it. And uh, I remember seeing the Clinton Chronicles right away and putting it on Access TV myself and getting threats over it. Democratic Party basically called me up and said, we want to hire you to work for us. And it was like high-level people. And uh, they said, you stop talking about, about Bill Clinton. And then when I kept doing it, they started threatening me. And I was like, well, go ahead and do something. And then a month later, they came and beat me up. I mean, I fought back, but I mean, that, people don't play games. And uh, I mean, I don't want to sound dramatic here, but I mean, it was the Clintons. I mean, they, they, they were telling me, shut up and stop talking about Waco. And they seemed surprised that I started fighting back. Uh, and uh, that'll get you motivated when four guys are punching you. And I, 
I just can't believe we're in such bondage and it's all sold by trendiness and the rest of it. I want to get into what this world's going to look like if they're able to take total control as they're trying to do briefly. Larry's going to join us for like an hour and a half next Tuesday. Shikari Jackson's going to be on the news tonight covering more of this, 7 o'clock uh, with the rest of the crew. Uh, this whole race war they're trying to start. People, you notice I'm really calm right now. I've been frantically trying to stop this. Now that so much of it's going through, we're stopping some of it. I'm more just in grieving for myself and the country and all of us because we're in deep crap. I mean, I mean, we're in the hands of some really bad people, and we've been sold out by the Republican leadership. And uh, Larry, I, I remember this. You did this years ago, and I know you don't like to push people to support you, but I know you lost everything you had doing this, and I know your book's out of print when I asked you about that. Uh, how do folks support you or if folks want to talk to you, get you to speak to their group or come on their show? I know you give out your home number and your your address for folks, so why don't you give that out for people? Well, you bet. Look, my phone number is 440-897-0611. My address is 58 Kensington Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. And Alex, I know people are going, how many people have you ever had on the show that give out their home number, their home address? Guys, under this regime, you ain't going to hide. You're not going to hide. There's no sense in it. Either we get together, either we form up, or forever shut your mouth. Because this thing is coming down. And next week, Alex, it'll go. I'd like to talk next week about the 450 troops going to Saudi Arabia, to the Anbar province. Yeah, believe it or not, folks, that's connected to this. That's 450 people going on what they call the uh, lily pad type operation. I've been on many of them, and it's a death trap. Why? Why would you send 450 of our best into a death trap, especially when you just had the Secretary of Defense and the head of the Joint Chief of Staff yesterday in a committee and Ornero, the Marine General, they're all saying it won't work. Why? Why all right. Well, Larry, we're going to talk to you next Tuesday. Be safe, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, I really appreciate you giving us the time today. And, of course, we're going to have you on a lot more as we enter the Clinton nightmare uh, 2.0. So thank you so much, sir. You bet. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,